Is today the day that this Russian-based team takes a big step forward? It very well could be. I talked about it a lot through the first few seasons, that there was really no way to try and force this team to be overly competitive. It just wasn't going to happen. It's We could have done that and would have had to have given up our draft picks to do it, or we could have focused on the draft and then gotten to this point here today, which is thankfully where we are, where thanks to the success that we have had in the draft, specifically when it comes to finding forwards, because of course, you know, already the signs are there in terms of elite Russian level defensemen, they're going to be few and far between. We have Tulipov, we have Mukhamadulin, who is of course created, Tulipov's computer generated, and that's it. But with the forwards, it's what we were hoping for. Over the past few seasons, Gurionov has developed, Barbashev, Trenin, Goldobin, even Ilya Mikhaev has taken step forward or steps forward. And then you factor in this crop of talent here that will be coming up through the ranks behind these guys that will allow us to go out and finally make trades for already established talent. That was the game plan. That was the strategy. And for me, it's worked out exactly as I would have wanted it to. And we'll see whether or not it plays out overly perfectly, but we'll see what happens in this episode. Now, starting things off, Anton Hadobin, we might as well bring you back. Uh, you do want to re-sign, which is nice. We'll save a little bit of money. Let's just see if that works. Again, he'll probably be in the AHL next year because Askarov will more than likely take a step up. But still, you know, we'll see what happens. Jeff Glass can go. Defensively, Gavrikov, who is not an RFA, unfortunately, uh, will be bringing him back, I hope. Let's go one by two. One by two. Mukamadulin will need to be uh, signing his ELC. We'll do that when the uh, re-sign phase actually begins. Nikolai Goldobin wants two years. We'll give him that. Let's bump him up to 3.5. Just to make sure he stays. Kuhlman, same thing. We'll have to be signing him in a moment. Left wings, Vitaly Kravtsov is going to need a big boy contract, which means we bring up ye old calculator app, and we'll figure out what the 85% trick is for him. Now, he wants a six-year deal out of the gates. I am willing to give that to him. <laughs> that is fairly impressive that just first contract he's like nope i'm mitch martyring this i want all the money not taking a shot at mitch martyr it was the right thing for him to do uh that right there is the cheapest that we could technically get him on with the 85 percent kamenev is also an rfa wants a two-year deal i'm willing to give that to him and this would be 2.7 on the dots bork and korpikoski we don't yet know and then for centers, we're going to bring back Artem Anisimov, because why the hell not? Uh, we'll pay him about 2.5. Still a decent contract, a veteran to keep around. So we'll see who accepts those early offers. And hopefully this time, again, I don't forget like an idiot to uh, not resign people once the phase is actually here. Uh, we'll let those scout contract expire for now. We'll see who the best options are. Kamenev is back. Gavrikov, Hadobin, Anisimov, Kravtsov, Goldobin. Perfect. Everybody re-signed. That's a damn good start for us. So let's take a look here. Goaltending-wise, uh, we're fine. Jeff Glass will be dropped for now. Defensively, Mukamadulin needs to sign his ELC. Comiskey, Frazier, Sigalette, they can all go. Ahonen and Galassi. For the wings, Bernier can go. Kuhleman will be signing him to his ELC. Hedman can go. Left-hand side, Bork and Korpakoski are on their way out. And then for centers, Turnbull's gone. So we're good to go. And there are still some guys that we might end up signing. Uh, obviously, like the 72 overall forward there, it might benefit him more to be in the AHL. Mukamadulin signs, Kuhleman signs, and we, just like that, are heading into free agency. Will Alex Ovechkin be here? Will other big names be here that will only help us move this team closer to where we want them to be. The first thing, though, is I do want to go to the coaching staff. Let's, uh, we actually lost our goalie coach to retirement, so let's sort that out really quickly and see what we're dealing with here. Let's just go teaching, as we always do. And we'll go for you. And DeMello 
DeMello, DeMello. Pittsburgh's in for him. We'll go NHL goalie coach and max out the offer. Actually, Pittsburgh's not in for him. The Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins are in for him. We'll see if he'll accept that max offer. I didn't mean to back out there, but that's okay. Let's go over to scouts and see if there are any top-notch scouts. Boy, are there. Okay. Now, some people are like, you should only sign Russian scouts. Eh, <laughs> is my response, because technically, they don't have nationalities. So it's like, oh, you can only, I mean, some people are like, oh, only sign the ones that are actually listed as from in Russia. It's like, eh, who cares? <laughs> For me, it's like, that's, that's a bit much. Who really cares? We're just going to sign all these top-notch scouts because I literally don't care. And we're going to send them all to Russia. And they'll get more familiar with Russia and then be beastly, beastly scouts. And honestly, it's probably overkill to sign any others because, I mean, yeah, we should be fine. And we already have a decent little department as it stands. So free agency. Here we go. Let's see what we have. Big names. Evgeny Malkin and Alex Ovechkin are both free agents, and we have 43 million to work with. Absolutely tremendous. We start off, though, by looking at the goaltenders, and there is no help to be found, but thankfully, we're looking okay due to previous moves. Mikhail Berdeen is Russian. He's also an RFA. So... I'm not sure what Winnipeg is looking for here, but what's the most I can offer him before a pick is required? I don't remember. Is it like 1.3 or 1.4? Yeah, it's 1.4. There we go. We'll offer him that. Just to steal him away. Makes sense to me. Huska, Larson, Werner, Merzlikens, Konovalov. Konovalov is also there. Very, very good. See if he'll sign that contract. Sandstrom and Lankinen. I mean, no. Skinner, Arsan, Kaiser. I think we're okay. Goaltending wise, we're looking good. Are there any better prospects outside of Berdin and Konovalov? Even if there are, Galiev? Hey, this guy kind of snuck through. How many goalies do we have, though? Or may not be able to sign Galiev, depending on how many goalies are on roster right now. And I'm honestly not sure how many that is. Shostyorkin, Hadobin, yep, I can't sign anymore. So it'll be just those two, <clears throat> which is fine by me. So back to free agency. Who do we have defensively? Anybody good? Probably not. No. The answer is very much no. Damn it. Again, this is going to continue to be the issue. Uh, Dmitry Kalikov, who rejected us before. Hopefully he does not reject us this time. He wants a three-year deal. He's honestly not looking for that much. That deal's worth it. I'm honestly going to pay him a little bit more than that, just to make sure we get him this time. Of course, he declined last time due to squad morale, but it's not going to be as bad this time as it was last time out. Do we have any other Russians? Uh, Ruda, Yaros, Yalmerson. It's not looking good. Simek's not Russian. Yeah. Cuckoo. Come on. Petrovich is Canadian. I mean, should technically count. We, we've been over this. <laughs> or not should technically count. I wish he counted. With a name like that, you wish he would count. Niku, Weidman, Erwin, Ben. Yeah, we're, we're already in rough territory. Dom Machine's not available. Again, this is going to be an issue, and yes, we are going to have to trade some forwards to bring in already established Russian defensive talent, as we talked about. That is the game plan, because, boy howdy, is there just nobody. Feder Gurdiv! He's Canadian. That sucks. Feder Gurdiv forever. And for the record, if anyone's like, oh, well, this guy technically plays for Russia, I'm just going off of what the flag is in the game because that way there'll be some people who are just like, well, this guy said he's not Russian, like 15 episodes from now. And it's just, I we've been over that before in prior uh, attempts of this series. So I typically just avoid that situation. Are there any medium sixes? Bergman, Lozon. Yeah, there's nobody out there. Okay, so then... We get to the forwards, and we'll look for prospects first. Barrett Hayton and Matthew Kachuk. 
are both RFAs. Miles Wood went up to high top six, but he's only a 79. Lekkonen's not available. Vikingstad is Swedish. Shocker. Snitsen. No. Any good prospects? I'm only looking for prospects right now. Yegor Korshkov. Perfect. Perfect. Yes, please. Tell me he'll accept that deal. That would be great. Dryden Hunt, Lucas Walmark, Amadio, Matthew Joseph, Mangiapani. Then we get down to the medium nines. Uh, yeah, you're not available. Damn. Jonathan Ong, Colsar, Tara Hirose, Dennis Yan. Please let there be somebody. Not looking good. I am going to actually look for medium bottom sixes here. Just in case. It's going to take a while to scroll down there, apparently. But yeah, we'll see what we have. Tyronic, what a guy. Main Mariner, legend. Carcone, Stevens, McEwen, Pearson, Mayoroff. Mayoroff? Lithuanian. That sucks. Not to be Lithuanian, but that he is Lithuanian. Kostitsin. Ukrainian. All right. We have all the luck going right now. Matche Guskov. Perfect. Or Matve. Regardless, we'll sign him to his ELC. I mean, 71 overall at 21 is not, you know, absolutely horrific. Laponov. Perfect. He's 22. He'll at least, you know, up the profile of the AHL team at a 74 overall. Vesunov. Estonian. Anybody else here? Tanner Genel. Grigorenko. Yes. Again, not the best player in the world, but beggars can't be choosers right now. Uh, Igor, I, I've never known how to pronounce your name. He's an Avs prospect, though. We'll sign him up. Bonks, Dietz, Hamilton, Janssen, Frobe, Franzen, Fiore, Natinen. We got another Kalikov. Estonian. Estonia to glory. Coming soon to a channel near you. Yeah, just laugh. Latipov is also available. Again, not the best option in the world, but this is going to help out the AHL team just to have bodies. Goldobins from Belarus. Uh, I figured it was worth checking those two guys for the hell of it. Yakupov, Ukrainian. Nesterov, Estonian. God damn. Man, there's a lot of medium bottom six forwards. Good lord. There's a ton of them. All right, Volkov's available, as is Varlamov. Not bad. So see, I mean, these are the guys that we'd be picking in the later rounds that we can just get for free later and then use those picks to trade down next year and maybe, you know, work it to our advantage a little bit more. Let's see, anybody else? How many more being bottom sixes could there possibly be? Filatov's from Belarus. Antropov's probably going to be Ukrainian. No, he is Russian. Okay. Oh, it's another medium bottom six forward. You never know. I mean, the AHL team will at least have younger guys that are worth playing. And then that way I don't have to sign, you know, a bunch of random vets that are just going to leave in a few years. This is really going to help with the overall morale of the team in the short term. Not too bad. But obviously a lot of forwards are going to have to be moved to make sure that we have enough defensemen on this roster. I cannot believe how many medium bottom six forwards there are. This is insanity. Absolute insanity. We have to be about done. Leonov? Jesus. We're up to 16 contracts offered now. That's going to bring us up to 40 players. So we might actually have to play it safe soon. Dimitro Timoshov's not going to be available. We've been over that before. Are we done? Yegor Sharangovich, Belarus. There we go. Okay, so now we get to the top notch, guys. Evgeny Malkin. Evgeny Malkin wants a one year deal. We're going to offer him 9.5. We're going to offer him 10 because we can afford it. And that still might make him tradable. Alex Ovechkin wants a two year deal. We're going to offer him 8.5 because we can easily afford it. If we get both of them, then like I said, even if we only hold on to them until the deadline, maybe this team is good and we say, fuck it, we're going for the cup. I don't know. 
But right now, the game plan is to sign them for the express reason of probably trading them towards the deadline once I, you know, can avoid getting in trouble for flipping them too early. Boy, Ryan Getzloff really fell off. Were there any other Russians here? I don't think I've missed anybody. If I have, then I mean, you guys will let me know and yell at me, and that's the correct response. I'm not seeing E. Valentin Zikov. Why not sign him up? You could be very, very useful to us. We are now up to nearly, we're up to 43 contracts on the dot here. Raffle, Felino, anybody else? Charlie Houdon. Le Houdon. Charlie Houdon. Oh, Wheel Kampf. Alright, we might be, we might be out of luck, but that's okay. Nope, Perkorkin. Sign him up. He could be a very good kind of floater for us between the two leagues. Nordstrom, Brower, Jan, Archibald. Uh, Dowd, Kuhnhockel. Show me the Russians. Show me the Russians. Show not the Ronaldos, the, the Russians. Where are the Russians? Show me the Russians. This isn't looking too good. And this isn't too good. Someone's gonna make a World War II in the snow joke and it's gonna be great. Who's it gonna be in the comments? It could be you. We don't have any other Russians. I think we're out, which is okay because this roster is already pretty damn well filled out. Yeah, I think we're gonna call it in three, two, now. All right. Let's see what happens. A lot of meh prospects potentially coming in. The big news, though, would be Ovechkin and Malkin as that goalie coach is signed. And we're bringing in the scouts. This is a huge offseason for us, potentially. Multiple Russians have anxiety over signing with their new team. Here we go. We also signed Satan. I know it's Shatan. Grigorenko signed. Leonov. Dotsuk, Arkhipov, Latipov, Kasparitis, Volkov, Varlamov, Antropov, Dmitry Kalikov, <laughs> Valentin Zikov, Igor Shivryov, Mikhail Berdine signs, but we don't yet know, Prokorkin signs, Korshkov signs, Liponov signs, Guskov signs, Konovalov signs, Evgeny Malkin signs, Alex Ovechkin signs. And we will not be picking up Mikhail Berdeen, but that right there is a free agent frenzy. That's how it's done. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that brings us up to 42 contracts. We're still under the cap floor, but now... Now we have room to maneuver. Now we have room to maneuver. Malkin and Ovechkin don't have the same value that they once had, but they still have value, which is very, very good news. Very good news indeed. And goalie-wise, we have five signed. So what we're going to do here is sign one dude to a big-time contract. Maybe not that big. I just need to get above the cap floor so that the contracts don't reset. And then, we're going to sim to the preseason so I can see what kind of player development we have. And then, we look for trades. That's the game plan here. So, Sigalette is going to be the chosen cap dump. Uh, we're actually going to go this way this time. We'll only get... Well, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I don't want to give him 18. But I also don't want to give him, like... Four million and just barely be over because if we start making trades, we're going to be under. So right about here, 14 mil will give us plenty of wiggle room, and then we're looking damn good. We are looking damn good. There we go. Let's take a lot of signs. So let's move to the preseason, and from there is when we will start to take a look. At what trade options we have, of course, the defense is going to be the primary focus. No doubt about it. No 
doubt about it. That is the focus. Because if we build up this defense, we could, we could, in theory, build up this defense and make the playoffs. You never know. It could happen. It might happen. Will it happen? I mean, I hope so. Making the playoffs this early would be pretty, pretty, pretty nice. So there we go. Let's see what we're dealing with with this roster. So goalie-wise, Shestyorkin and Askarov are the one-two punch. No doubt. Hadobin, Konovalov, Zagadulin down in the AHL. Defensively, it's Kalikov, Lyabushkin, Gavrikov, Rykov, Valiev, and Mukhamadulin. And we'll even call up Vorobiov when we get the opportunity to. Obviously, we need defense, though. Desperately. And then forward-wise, Malkin, Goryanov, Kravtsov, Tarasenko, Ovechkin, Trenin, Barbashev, Goldobin, Mikhaev, Kamenev, Zikov, Sokolov, Prohorkin, Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of options. We have a lot of options. Quite a few. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to player search. And we are going to look at the top defensemen in the game right now. And we'll see where certain Russians reside. As Jesus Christ, there are a lot of defensemen with max value, including Justin Schultz. Hmm. Provorov. Obviously a top target in terms of whether or not we actually have the assets to get him. Flat out, we don't. It would take Tulipov and a lot of other moves to try and pull that deal off. It's just not, it's not going to happen. Flat out, as much as I'd love to get Provorov at some point in this series, it's not going to happen. He is far too valuable. Man, even Ryan Merkley is way the hell up there. Next up, though, for Russian defensemen, there's no way Owens is available or Baraball. Yeah, I mean, we would have seen them in the draft. Mikhail Sergachev, of course, would be extremely interesting, but also extremely expensive. Tulipoff, of course, is ours. Ronick's not available. Adam Fox, Boakfist. Who else do we have here? Who else do we have in terms of valuable defensemen? Gerard Vatnin. It's got to be somebody. You now see the issue here in terms of Russian defensemen. You see the issue. Perunovic isn't available. Eiko Brody Bouchard. Dmitry Orlov is the next option. He is going to be very easy to acquire, though, which is really good news for us. Lindell, Montour, Shattenkirk, Handel, Bodan, Sandine, Timmons. This also gets you a look at how certain players have developed, so I'm not against leaving all of this in. Eric Cernok apparently doubled up. That's just a glitch then. Cider, Anderson, Tukio's finish. Dobson, Ivara, Mata. Oh boy, Alexiev in Washington. It's up to an 81. Alex Romanoff in Montreal. Also looking pretty good. We got four players on this watch list currently. And we're still going to need to try and acquire more than that, if possible. Baron, Bernard Docker, Schneider, Teratukin. Hey, freaking Toronto ending up with a defenseman that I really need to get. Kaiser, Soderstrom, Goulet, Wallinder. Who else do we got? Shishkanov is Ukrainian. That sucks because he's pretty damn good. Melok's not going to be available. Heinola, Emil Andre. Hacker, Ryan, and Peverly. Versi? He's American. Wouldn't have guessed. Reasoner, Malhotra. Who else do we have here as the value continues to drop, which isn't the worst thing in the world. We already have the Bushkin and Rykov, who have more value than P.K. Subban, or just as good as value as P.K. Subban. Okay, then. Uh, Verana? No. 
Palak, Gudis. Who else? Who else? Nikita Zadorov. There. Wow, his overall is way down. I didn't mean to even hit trade for asset. Son of a bitch. Wow, is his overall way down. It's a morale thing, though. It is definitely a morale thing. Okay, well, we'll remember that he's there. Unfortunately, it's going to bring me right back to the top of the list. So we're going to go to pin players. Because these guys need to be the targets first. Sergachev, if they don't want to trade him, I can't do anything about it. Yeah, so Sergachev's out. Much like Provorov, he's way, way too expensive. So we'll unpin him. Dmitry Orlov, though, is the first target that we can really go for here to improve this defense. Although, how much time did he have left? One year. You could argue it would be worth waiting to try and get him, but that's a complete toss-up. Karpatsev, obviously, we wouldn't use here. Defensively, obviously, we wouldn't use anybody. It would just be the forwards. So right now, Kravtsov, Gurionov, Trenin, Barbashev, Mikhaev, Goldobin, Kamenev, and then the overall start to drop a bit. Artem Anisimov has unreal value for no reason whatsoever. He is the perfect guy to use. I don't know why Anisimov's value is that high, but he is the perfect man to use in this instance to try and get Orlov. I might not even have to retain cap to uh, try and boost up that value. This should be relatively easy, but you see though, with a lot of our forwards, it's okay. Who the hell, who the hell are we gonna get rid of? That's gonna be the big question with a lot of these guys. Who stays and who goes? But some of these younger prospects, not everyone's gonna make it. Like Saprikin, this Saprikin over that Saprikin is worth getting rid of. Will that work? Rejected. Not sure how close this deal actually is. Draft pick wise, what if we use the Boston fifth? Yeah, we're still not that close. Uh, both, you know, those medium nines are worth getting rid of. They're worth getting rid of. They are expendable. Let's add both Saprikins. What do you think now, Washington? Still rejected. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. See, it is going to be a little bit tough to build this defense, but we can make it work. What if I use our own third round pick here? That's getting to make it a little bit more expensive than I'd prefer it to be, but it's worth it. What about now? Still not that close, really. Like, I know we're offering them players that they don't necessarily want, but damn, you know? Damn. Who else could we use? We could use Sokolov. I don't think he's going to get that much better. Washington would have too many skaters. All right. That's okay. We can use draft picks here. Because we're going to have players that we move later on to try and make this work anyway. So even if I have to use a second round pick, I'm willing to do it. It's a massive risk because of you know Orloff being on an expiring deal. We might just be able to get him for free next year, or maybe he resigns, and that's not the case. Will this just go through outright? Jesus. You see how you see to the level, the extent that they're playing hardball for Dmitry Orloff. And if you think we'd be able to get Sergachev or Provorov, good luck with that. I got a nice uh, oceanfront condo to sell you in Kansas. Uh, let's see, will that go through? Jesus, I don't even know if we're going to be able to get Orlov. I think Orlov's too expensive too. Without using... I mean, we're already using primetime picks here. Without using somebody else of top-notch value which I don't really want to use yet because we have multiple players we have to acquire. I think we're out on Dmitry Orlov. I think we're gonna go even cheaper than that just to make sure that we can get multiple players. So Orlov is out. We are gonna be targeting Alexiev, Romanov, and Taratukin. Alexiev is gonna be the first. 
let's see what we can do here. So again, Artem and Izimov is going to be the main guy that we look to use. We will also throw in some medium nines. Let's throw in the Suprikans again, or have menu lag screw me out of adding either of them. Thank you, game. Jesus. Gotta love it. There we go. Will that go through? No. This could still be tough, unless the game's just, you know, boosting up the Anisimov value beyond what it actually is, but we, uh, we don't have Fog of War on, so that's the exact value. Third and a fifth? A fifth rounder doesn't bring it from quite close to fair value to done deal. That's insane. They need to fix the terminology. There we go. Alex Alexiev has been acquired for Artem Anisimov, two medium nines and two draft picks. Decent boost to the defense. And we'll look to add again by acquiring Alex Romanov from the Habs. He is our next target here. They don't want to trade him, of course. But now is the time where we actually get to give up a decent forward prospect, which I, I'm scared of. I am. I'm scared of it. So we're looking at Kamenev, Mikhaev, Kavanaugh, Kuhlman. Kuhlman's the guy to give up there. Kavanaugh's above him and even better. And there's a chance Volchenkov will be even better. So Kuhlman's the guy to give up in this instance. Which sucks, but that's it. Well, uh, yeah, I'd say he's the guy to give up. We're not going to be able to keep every top notch prospect that we want. We know this. We got to be able to move players and move on from players at times. Is there anybody else I can add to this deal? I think we'll still look at draft picks. Let's look at a fifth and a sixth. No, we're still not going to be close because they don't want to get rid of them, which really sucks. So we're also looking, this could be where we move on from Sokolov. Montreal would have too many skaters, son of a bitch. Okay, it's going to have to be draft picks then. It's going to have to be. What about a third rounder next year? Sweeten it just a touch. Still worth it. There's a seventh round pick, just a touch. Apparently not. It is a sixth round pick. Just a touch. Appa oh, now all of a sudden you want to save salary. This game. This game. <sighs> Jesus. It's an ELC for an ELC. Oh, but there's 20k difference. Good God, man. Good God. This friggin' game sometimes, I swear. <sighs> this friggin... They have $11 million in space. This friggin' game. Unbelievable. You know what? I don't care. Let me take Paul Byron. You don't get that third round pick anymore. This game's gonna be dumb. I'm gonna make them pay the damn stupid tax. Will that go through? So stupid sometimes. It really is. Oh my god, yep, negative value Paul Byron's gonna screw me over here. Fine, take the third. And now all of a sudden it's not fucking sufficient anymore. I hate this. Oh, I hate when this game does this. So much. Are you kidding me? He basically has negative value. What the hell? This is so dumb. Oh, this is dumb. This is dumb. Incredibly dumb. He basically has negative value, and the game's like, nope, sorry. What about for a leak? Just a bit low. Kiss my grits. What do we got? Fine, have a fourth round pick down the road. Will that go through? Just a bit low. Yeah, it was, it was a bit low before. Glad to know what the definition of low is. Uh, yay. E. A. You're better than this. You're better than this. Three picks, and that's still not sweetened a touch. I mean, come on. 
Come on. I defend this game where I can, but nobody can say that the logic behind that is sound. As the dog makes her presence known. Will this go through? I swear to... You know what? I'm done. I'm done with today's episode. I don't even want to look at this game anymore. <laughs> I don't even want to look at this game anymore. You see what the game plan is. We'll continue to look at players that we can go out and get. Uh, but for now, this game can kick rocks for today. I have better things to do than to sit here and mess around with the dumb trade system. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope if you weren't exactly sure on what the game plan was with this team and how I was looking to build it over the first few seasons that you now understand. It's going to be a pretty good year for us. Again, Malkin, Ovechkin, easily tradable, easily able to hold on to them if this team is looking good. We will still look to improve that defense. I mean, obviously, once we get Romanoff, you know, we'll have three guys over an 80. We'll still look for other options. Nikita Zadorov could be one of them. But for now, this game does not deserve any more of my time. So I thank you for watching. Shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. I love you. I will see you guys tomorrow.